Hey guys, Josh here from Vlog and Fuel Gaming, and today I wanted to quickly go over how free to play friendly is My Hero Academia, the strongest hero. Now, if you are a spender, then you're probably not in this boat, but as free to play, I feel like free to play players are at a big disadvantage because of this little gift box up here, but we're gonna go over that later. So, how free to play friendly is this game for players? compared to other games. Uh, I'm going to be comparing this game to Dokkan Battle because Dokkan Battle I've been playing for over three years now and I have a good basis on what's pretty friendly and what's not. Dokkan Battle to me is a very good free-to-play friendly game to compare to because that game gives you enough summons and enough currency to get guaranteed units. And this game is not looking to be one of those super free-to-play friendly games, but I don't think it's far off. So let's see what we can do to, to improve this game if that's the case, right? Now the first thing I'm going to go into is the story. At the very beginning, the story is very generous because you're able to fly through the first couple chapters and it feels good, right? When you're able to fly through those first couple chapters and get all these rewards, it feels pretty good. Eventually you do get gated off. I think around chapter 5 is the first like road stop for players. Uh, now that they... They're not even... They, they, they stated that they're going to try and improve the stamina system, but I'm not sure if it's going to come to pass. After chapter five, though, it does slow down to like where you need to get to it. Like you get up halfway, and then you have to get two more levels, and then you get the other half of the story, which is kind of dumb. I feel like each chapter should just be its own thing, and shouldn't be gated behind levels. Because I'm on chapter ten right now, but for me to reach the end of this chapter, I have a sus feeling. Uh, I have a feeling I'll have to hit forty-five because I had to hit forty-three just to unlock the first part of this. So this is probably gonna be gated behind level forty-five, which is why I'm not rushing it anyway. Because there's no point in rushing it. Especially since it's going to be gated behind, like, each thing is going to be gated behind four levels, right? Half of this is going to be two levels below what this is going to be, right? And it's also going to require you to get your BP up. So, the story was pretty generous at the beginning, but in the mid-game to... Or I think we're in the mid-game, it, it starts to feel a little less good, right? It's not as great. Now, we did get this, uh... Well, that's not it. Is it this internship? We did get this event, free-to-play event, you know, to where you just do these puzzle pieces, and honestly... This is probably the first event that I'm like, dang, this is actually... I want to see more of these because they, there was no restriction, no monetizations, no nothing. Like, the rewards is for everyone, right? Everyone got five hero tickets, everyone gets five car tickets. I'm still working on finishing the puzzle, but this last part of the puzzle to me is, is not really the big claim. The big claim are the tickets, right? So if they do more of these events, then I'll be happy to see that because this is definitely a full free-to-play event. There's not much restriction behind it, it's just stuff you do every day. And you get a lot of rewards for it, right? So, like, yeah, I, I like this event. This event was really, really good. I want more of this. This is the first free-to-play event that we got that was full free-to-play. Now we go into the battle pass. Uh, the battle pass is... Here, over here. How free-to-play is the battle pass? Well, there is a free track, and then there's a pay track. How much are you losing, though, if you don't get the full track? is actually quite a bit, right? As you see, you get a lot of tickets, and a lot of these contribution coins or tokens when you're on the pay track, right? You also get stamina. Not to say that you don't get tickets on the free track, you get some, not a lot. Once you get the little 50, I think this is the biggest batch of tickets for that free to play, like, standing, which is you get 50, or you get two multis on the card summons. Now, I kind of wish this was a, a ticket of your choice. Then I would have been like, yeah, the battle pass is awesome for the free to play. It's not terrible. It, it is free stuff at the end of the day, right? So it's it's okay, but you are losing like probably over half of, of what you could be gaining if you bought the pass. The Ultra Pass gives you so much more in return. It's kind of dumb. But the free track isn't that bad. I think compared to other free tracks, it's got a decent free track, right? Uh, let's go into the next thing. Let's go into the summons first. All right, no better, let's go into the mall so we can discuss the mall's issues for the summons. Now, when it comes to tickets, I feel like tickets at 250 coins, it's a little overpriced. And because you need 25,000 coins to get a multi. Now, if you are a full free to play player, these are going to be harder to come by after a certain point. Whenever you get to a certain point in super co op, that is when the tickets start to fall out of your, or the coins start to fall out of your hand, right? Because, like, that is a whale mode, and you can only go so far as free to play, right? The first beginning of it was pretty good for like a few thousand, but then it just kind of falls off completely and it's a dead mode at this point, right? You're just there, you're just there to get like, you're, you're there to get this stuff, right? 
that's pretty much all you're there for. I should probably top off while I'm here. Uh, so, like, that's my main worry, is that the Super Co-op Battle doesn't get reset, so it's gonna be really hard to sustain more tickets. I wish it did get resetted every month, so you could regain those awesome rewards, right? That's why I think these should be dropped to 150 and not 250. I think it'd be a little bit better because you have four sets of tickets, still five sets of tickets to get, right? And you have to pick and choose. Obviously, the best one is the event recruit ticket. I think everyone knows now that event tickets are the way to go. Hero tickets are kind of uh, not really what you want to go for unless you don't care who you get. But if you want to go for targeted characters, event tickets are the way. And then obviously you got your card tickets, which probably no one cares about right now because cards are not really what makes the game fun, right? Now let's go into the summons. My biggest problem with the summons for free to play is that you have to get to 100 pity if you have terrible luck. I've already hit hard pity three times, twice on standard and once on card banner, right? Which sucks because that's all. <laughs> I've had to spend 50,000 coins to get the hard pity like it's wow like it sucks and I, and I and I pay like I paid for my very few benefits right I paid $160 on this game and those benefits are going to be what come in factor in this later because there are a lot of paid tracks you gotta consider for free to play right so I would like to see them drop this to 70 or make it to where you get to choose who you want off the banner. I think being able to choose who you get off the banner is probably the biggest W in my book. Then I would not be so salty about this pity. Because if you got to choose whichever character you wanted off standard banner, you could start racking up those dupes and racking up towards building BP and getting your character as strong as possible, which I would like to see. There's never been a gacha game that's been like, here, you get to pick your character, right? Of all these four, you get to pick. That's kind of what the point of these stupid event tickets are. But I kind of wish they would just take these out for the standard characters and just keep this more exclusive towards the new characters, right? So that's one way of doing it. The other way they could do it is just make the pity less stupid and make it drop it to 70, right? That's one other, that's the other way they could do it, right? Now let's go on to the actual, well this is, this is so like, subjectical. This little gift box right here is the play, free to plays player's enemy. This is why free to play is kind of like in this crap situation right here, this little gift box. <sighs> Let's go into it. This is a paid player's salvation. And this is a free to play's player. Like, they, they don't like you here. Because all this is paid stuff. Outside of the logins and the weekend carnival, everything else in between is paid stuff. Now, the sponsorship. If you don't pay for this, you're missing out on so many coins. It's not even like, there's not even a fair balance. You just get 50 as a free to play and then you're getting like 1,000 to 800 if you paid for this, which is not fair. I do feel like the free to play track should have a better thing than, so, uh, this should have a better thing than just 50 every time. Like this should scale up. Like this is not even like, you're kicking, you're kicking the players that support your games in the crotch because all these paid players, including myself, are getting way more currency, right? The next one, once again, a paid thing. The next one, once again, paid thing. Next one. Uh, this one's a little bit better, but it's still like, yikes. Cause like chapter one, you get 50, right? And then you're get, the only thing you're getting is paid is two extra tickets. Fine, that's 500 coins right there, right? Chapter two, 500 more coins. Chapter three, oh, 200, you're getting more than that. Now you're getting like 750 coins. It starts to scale up and up and up, and then you start to realize, like, oh crap, the pay track has actually got quite a bit of advantage over free to play. Like, this is kind of like the no no zone for me. Like, I bought all these just to make my life easier, but I understand that players can't always, like, buy this stuff. Like, I had to sell my Xbox One to get all this stuff, right? I had to sell a console for this. Just keep that in mind. Now, let's go to the next one. Once again, this is the special recruit token. Uh, as at least as a free to play, you are getting these tickets. However, you notice most of them are card tickets. I feel like once again, the players should get a free will of what they want and what ticket they should get. You should not tell us what we want. We should get the pick. Now, if you look at the pay track, holy crap, 500, 500, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Like it's not even fair. Like there's not even a comparison. You're giving free to play players pennies and nickels, and they're giving everyone else like who paid for this shit like 
the grand, like, this is like $100 worth of, like, what the hell? Like, what the hell is this? This is not even fair. And then you have the virtual battle mode. Our virtual battle recruit ticket. This is the event that's in the game currently. It's a event, and they charge you 10 bucks to get some of this other stuff. How in the world do you release an event that is time-gated and put a paywall behind it? That is the type of thing that I don't like in gacha games. Why are you releasing an event that you designed for all the players and gating it behind monetization when there's so much of it in the game already? I hope the boss raid doesn't have this mechanic, but honestly, it's probably going to since the mock constants had it. It's stupid, right? They need to stop hassling people for money when there's so much of it. Like, in here alone, without even top-ups, you get so much, like... This is like all like twenty dollars stuff, ten to twenty dollars things, right? Outside the uh, the stamina, which why you why you charge me five bucks to refill my stamina? Like the stamina system is trash as is. This should just be something you get for free. Like what is this? And then you got your hero supplies, which is semi like this is free, but if you miss it, you have to pay ten coins. Not a lot of people want to dump ten coins in for twenty five stamina. It doesn't really equate to anything, right? Now the last thing that I want to drive my drive home on is uh, where is it? Uh, the PvP. I am so happy that PvP did it right. Now, there is hope for the free-to-play for this game because of PvP alone. Now, if you're not a PvP player, you're going to have a lot harder time obtaining things. But Season 2 rewards for PvP are... I want to give the devs an applaud for this. Because this is the direction I want to see this game go. And all modes, not just PvP. You get a full multi just to go into T1 training. Anyone can do that. Getting T1 training is, isn't that hard, right? This is completely within new free-to-play players' grasp. Because Deku is very good, Riot's very good, Yuraka is very good, Denki's very good. Like all the free player, all the free characters are very good. Now, this is also a concern of mine because in the future, whenever they release a new character that's a PvP monster that's behind a paywall, it might be a lot harder to attain these rewards. Right? This is very early, so this is fine. And then once again, if you get the Pro Hero T1, you get a lot more summons. Like, you get a lot more free tickets and a lot more coins. And then it's just, it keeps going up and up and up. Now, realistically speaking, I think everyone can get the T1 training, right? I think everyone can do this. This is not hard. However, I think Pro Hero T1 is more for skilled players. So if you're not the best PvP or if you're a mobile, this could be a bit more of a challenge. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just think it might be a bit harder for players on phones or like who are not very good at pvp games like this is where it could cap off be hard like i'm not even motivated myself to do this because i find ranked pvp not very fun because it's gated behind like it comes out at certain times a day this needs to be open all the time right i feel like if it was open all the time then it would be more fun it would just be max battle but it's like you could just rank it right so i would and then at the end of the season we're going to get our free rings in 26 days i'll get my free multi it'll be nice it'll be fun right so I'm hoping that they just make it to where point battle is not always getting behind a time zone. But I do like that they make rank give rewards. I, they give good rewards, okay? That is the one thing about this game that I can say is PvP is actually pretty free-to-play friendly for now. Whenever they release a new character that's gated behind a paywall that's broken, things could change. I could change my mind. PvP isn't the greatest. It's not like the worst either. It's pretty okay. I think there needs to be changes, but this is still a new game. Let it breathe, let it figure itself out, let it discover who it is, so we can go forward and make this a good free-to-play friendly game, as well as having it have whales to support it. My last topic is, or my last subject is, I don't like how many dupes you need to get to get your character to like this SSS+. Plus. To get to SSS+, Plus or whatever to unlock this, you need 12 copies to get a character. Now, that being said, Deku is going to be one of those characters that free-to-play players will get there first. I do think Yuraka and Red Riot will be, and Denki will be one of those, you know, free-to-play free friendly characters that people can get the SSS Plus eventually. But for like Momo, Tokoyami, Aizawa, Todoroki, and like the, you know, the big, the big shiny new toys, those are more whale characters. So I hope in the future they release more characters like Aizawa, where you can farm up a dupe for your character and get, you know, that going for free to play. 
that will be very nice. I hope they do that. So this game does have a good future ahead of it. It's not the greatest free-to-play, like, game, but it's not the worst. On a scale of 1 to 10, I would like to give this game at least a 6 to a 7. It has potential to go to 8 to 9, depending on what they do in the future, right? Now, I hope the devs take a lot of feedback and they make this game free-to-play friendly. Since this is a PvP game, it should be good in both worlds. I feel like free-to-play players and paid players should get what they ask for. Paid players should get, you know, more dupes. Just, you know, let them get more dupes. Free-to-play players should just get characters. Like, honestly, limited banners. Every player should have a chance for at least one copy. 100 pity is kind of high, and we don't get enough resources to get to that, so... It is going to be one of those things where you might have to start going every other banner or every other two banners just to guarantee yourself a character, which is unfortunate, but it might end up that way. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. So my conclusion is that this game is it, it, it is free to play friendly, but there's a lot of monetization that I would like to see taken out. The biggest one that I would like to see taken out is timed events. I don't want to see any monetizations for timed events or events in general, especially since I have plenty of it in the game as is. But outside of that, I think this game is really well grounded. It's nice, right? There's a lot of quirks and kinks in it that can be worked out, but this game is not out of reach for being perfect for both worlds. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit the sub button if you're new or if, you're, or if this is your first time visiting this channel. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this game. I would like to know what you guys think. What are your thoughts? Do you think this game is going to be free to play in the future? Or do you think it's just going to turn into a whale game? Um, thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.